Hey everyone, the Artie Dans here. Welcome back to Shockmania. Now, I will be the first to admit that my taste in horror movies is a little different than most other people. Now, check out this list and judge for yourself. You hated these movies. How do I know? Because of their critic and user review scores. But maybe you're a bit like me and enjoyed the following five movies. I know I did and I hope I'm not alone. These scores were aggregated from Rotten Tomatoes, Metacritic, IMDb, TMDB, and the Chinese movie website Dolban. So I have a broad range of user reviews and scores to verify that these films are overwhelmingly loathed by almost everyone but me. How does this movie score only a 3% on Rotten Tomatoes? Now, to be fair, that is the critic score and not the user score, which sits at a far more respectable 50. And a tiny bit higher on Metacritic. But this movie could be a good example of the disconnect between audiences and professional critics. But IMDb paints a different picture. A lowly 2.9 score for this one, and some choice quotes from the featured review saying this. If you like this film, there's something very wrong with you. Pulling nails is more entertaining. Stay away from this piece of poo. Now that's a bit harsh, but I think I've also acknowledged that there is something wrong with me. This movie was never going to be a classic and it never intended to be. It was a film made to take advantage of the new public domain status of the characters and relied on shock value and curiosity to get the audience to watch. I like the fact that this movie tried to take itself seriously, but also knew it was just a little bit goofy. The masks are cheapish and lack any real creepiness. The acting is horrendously bad and made worse by the heavy accents of the lead, who are horribly miscast. Then there's also the fact that this is a Jagdinch production, a British sweatshop that just pumps out crap film after crap film. Except I didn't think this was crap. This was fun and showed that there was potential creativity behind the concept, which would be realized in the sequel. Now, honestly, I think anyone that hates this film is a bit of a spoil sport who just jumped on the popular website bandwagon, which was to kind of trash the film before they had even seen it, because those who've watched it at least had some fun with it. Seriously, why do you guys hate this film? The eighth entry into the very popular Friday the 13th series is bloody hilarious. Now, this is not my favorite movie in the series. That would be part four, like everyone else. But it's the movie I find myself watching more often just for the sheer ridiculousness of it. Now, I'm aware that a movie that builds itself as Jason going to New York has very little New York in it. With most of the action taking place on a chartered boat where the young and the restless reject in Scott Reeves and a relative newcomer in Jensen Daggett are attempting to control their hormones in front of her creepy guardian and a hockey masked killer played deliciously for the second time by Kane Hodder. But those ridiculous moments are what make this film worth it. From knowing that Jason had to swim part of the trip, even though any fan of the series knows that water is his kryptonite, to the fact that he chases his victims down the street with hundreds of people watching them, I can admit that the best part of this film is the soundtrack. Now, again, with the IMDb reviews, but this one's kind of hard to argue against. There's no suspense, no terror, no wondering or caring about who's going to live. There's just idiocy. And I know the Fridays are famous for their lack of continuity, but please, how could that girl have possibly been attacked by Jason when she was just a kid? This is just plain bad, really bad. There was not one character I really cared about, and I was actually hoping that they would die, all of them. Well, I wasn't wishing death on all of the characters, but I have to admit, some of the kills were fantastic, especially that uh, boxing dude who gets his head taken off with a swift uppercut. Friday the 13th movies can bring out some great hyperbole from the fan base, but let's take it down a notch with this title. In my opinion, the title that had no boobs in it was the worst one, looking at you, part six. I'm gonna pretend I know why everyone hates this one, but the reality is, I don't know why you guys would hate this movie. This is the movie that gave the world Paul Rudd. Surely that's a good thing, right? In all seriousness, I can admit this movie is messy. Technically the fifth in the series, it's starting to go off the rails by trying to explain the druids and the ruins and this shady underground organization that controls Michael. 
I know a lot of people were unhappy that Danielle Harris wasn't asked to reprise her role either. Instead, her character was both miscast and then gloriously killed in the first 10 or so minutes, with her baby dumped in a train station, which is found by Tommy by listening to the station announcement on her sketchy call to a radio station asking for help. But at least we had the late Donald Pleasance reprising his role as Dr. Loomis, even if he was being held up by invisible cables and was clearly in a lot of pain. He was a trooper to the end, and he has my respect. One user review on TMDB left this tasty quote. This installment was the equivalent of Conan the Barbarian picking up an expensive guitar and trying to play for a classy prog band like Opeth. I don't know exactly what that looks like in a movie sense, but I don't think it's this title. That quote, it's just a bit me. On a side note, the infamous producer's cut of this movie is, in my opinion, more enjoyable than the original release. But either way, I love this movie, even though it is not my favourite Halloween movie in the series. Now what do you get when you cross Kickstarter? With the idea to create a parody of 80s and 90s horror movies, ensuring that you have lots of kills and lots of boobs. Well, you get this, Muck. What I don't understand about why people don't like this film is the fact that Kane Hodder is in this title playing a character called Grawsom Crutal. How could you possibly hate that? On top of that, there's no CGI in this film, with the director stating he didn't want to direct computers. What a legend. Everything here is practical. But because of this, those soy creatures at the Screen Actors Guild called this movie one of their top five most dangerous scripts thanks to the Muddy Marsh scenes. Time out for a second. Could you possibly imagine what they would say about modern Marvel movies? They wouldn't even be in the top one millionth of the most dangerous scripts unless you count something like paper cuts, food poisoning, and broken nails. In Muck, we follow a group of friends who try to survive the night while two evil creatures try to kill each other and them. Pretty simple, right? There's no backstory here. The characters are fully self-aware they're in a horror movie, and the bulk of the 90 minutes is made up of boob and bum shots. But we live in a modern time where things like that are a no-no. For example, take this charming review I saw on IMDb. I did not finish watching this movie as all the nudity rubbish was boring me to hell and back. I like horror movies for the horror. Creepy, jumpy, bloody, great characters and not because I might get to see some random shots of nudity. I do not get the long-standing connection between semi-naked woman and horror. I like chocolate and pizza, but I would never put them together. So if you are like me and just want simple horror, then pass on this one. This dude has never heard of Nutella pizza. No wonder he hated this film. What a bore. This movie was supposed to be part of a series, but they were never made. Instead, the director made a title called Fog City in 2023, which was equally as hated as this. Which means I should check it out ASAP. Now, it wouldn't be a list by the Artie Dance if I didn't include at least one Chinese horror movie, and this one is a doozy. I had a lot to pick from, but I chose this because I haven't spoken about it enough and wanted to add it in. This is supposed to be a sequel to White Paper Girl, if that means anything to you. But they don't actually continue on. They just use the same characters and the same location. But the most important thing to remember is this film is hardly a horror film, and that's most likely why you guys hated this. And if you're thinking, maybe the Chinese loved it, well, check out this banger of a review from Dolban. During the 2023 Spring Festival, I watched this play out of boredom, only to discover that it wasn't just the dumbest, it was even dumber. It's truly astonishing how the writers and directors could create something with such low intelligence. Perhaps they assumed the audience shared their level of intellect? Now, I take offense at the implication that I share the writer and director's low intelligence level, but honestly, this reviewer does have a point. Because Chinese movies can't use supernatural or have ghosts, everything that happens in this movie is explained with a rubber mask. Scooby-Doo style. A fire took the life of a pretty young art teacher. Now, a few years later, her ghost is out for revenge against a group of pretty girls who she kidnaps and attempts to steal their beauty. 
There is so much wrong with that synopsis and watching the film will leave you even more confused. For example, we learn the teacher didn't die but was horribly disfigured by the fire and suffered a mental breakdown. This means the girls don't see a ghost, but they actually see the teacher who has the power to levitate and also to lift objects many times heavier than her. But then it's later explained that the man who's been keeping her safe also dresses up as her to protect her from being caught. Only he's twice her size. And for some reason, no one could work that out until he took off his mask and revealed that he was a man. So much of this movie is wrong, but the way it does it is oh so right. I loved it because of how stupid and ridiculous it was. The attempted jump scares, the terrible makeup effects, and the absolute lack of continuity in the story makes this a hilariously fun movie to watch. And can you believe there are movies far, far worse than this from the same production house? So that's my list of movies that I loved that you hated. What did you think of it? Is there anything there that you agree or disagree with me with? What are some of the titles that you love that you know that everyone else hated? How about you leave me a comment below? We have a little bit of a discussion about it. Otherwise, I'm the Artie Dan. You are watching Shockmania. If you're here for the first time, please like the video and perhaps consider subscribing. Otherwise, I'll try and catch you next time.